Hi, Lachlan. <laughs> so much for joining us. Uh, so for those who don't know you, your name is Lachlan Russell of Headstrong Films. You are one of the greatest uh, videographers in Australia and your team and you guys specialize in sport and action and a few other little things. So really thankful that you've given us some time today to talk about all things social, video, uh, creating documentaries, all that kind of thing. So I'd love to chat to you today about storytelling, um, but I guess I'll just talk to you a bit about your resume. You guys film for X Games, Monster Energy, BMW, Suzuki, Komatsu, Supercars, Netball Australia, NBL. Uh, you've been on ESPN, uh, Foxtel, Seven Mates, um, I'm probably missed a couple there, but you've also filmed all across the world in <laughs> India, America, New Zealand, East Timor, Spain, Poland, uh, and you've also filmed the likes of Jonathan Thurston, Delta Goodrum, uh, Jackson Strong, who's a six-time gold medal winning X Games uh, athlete, Harry Bink, my, Matt Wright, also known as the Outback Wrangler, and have I missed anyone in particular? I think you covered covered pretty much everything there. Thanks so much for having me. No, that's awesome. So I'll get straight into the questions. You guys specialize in documentary style and viral social content. How did you kind of find those styles? Uh, the the style sort of came about um, originally because that I guess that was kind of the the things that I was into. Um, like obviously everyone enjoys watching like a, a piece of viral content whether it's like a stunt or you know any of those sort of things so I always um really liked what all that was about you know how it's you know you get to work on like this really cool project and then you get to release it to the world and you see it just be seen by millions of people or whatever that was always really appealing to me um and then the documentary style of things was uh more came about from like working on things like that you start to see like what a cool story things like that are um so then it sort of developed into some more longer form documentary style things and then that that was actually uh became probably our biggest part of of the business was the documentary style stuff because it's um yeah there's just so much out there so many stories to tell that that aren't being told so it sort of just naturally developed into that as well and so tell me a little bit about headstrong films when did you guys start and how many films have you guys shot to date so headstrong films as it stands today uh we're nearly four years old now um there's initially yeah there's three of us so jackson strong ben hydrick and myself um we we sort of all came together full time uh nearly four years ago um, previous to that, um, all three of us had worked together in some capacity on and off for the last, I'd say, probably the last 12 years. Um, so it's been a very, very long relationship with all three of us. And then when the time was right, we all all came together. So it's um, yeah, it's been good. It's really good to work with people that you have known for so long and trust so much. It, it works really well. Amazing. And I think you've shot something like 15 documentary series and you actually don't know how many films you've shot. Yeah, it's hard to keep count. There's just um, there's just so many different styles and a, a video, like some of it's just, you know, can be really short form and you just completely forget that you ever worked on it because it was such a such a short period of time. But um, yeah, it'd be easily hundreds of different projects over the years. Um, and the documentary series, um, yeah, you have like multiple on the go every year. So um, it all adds up really quickly. Yeah. Amazing. And you are actually the first person who taught me about video storytelling and how you can use video, I guess, to showcase a brand um, and showcase the people that work behind the brand and find those stories of customers that uh, a bit unique. So I guess, how do you guys go about uh, planning your pre-production process? Um, how do you plan a, a shoot um, to make sure that you do get all those pieces of that story in such a beautiful way? So with pre-production, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of different styles of pre-production. You can go from 
your very rigid storyboard um, and you can go right through to literally just, you know, what we'd call winging it um, and just sort of going with the flow and figuring out the story as you go. Um, so there's, yeah, let, let's go firstly with winging it um, is, yeah, for lack of a better word. Um, what that allows you to do is really, you know, just start start filming and just start speaking to people and interviewing people. And then you, you actually get the real stories and let them develop. And you've really got to think on your feet about how you're going to start the story and what you're going to talk about and where you're going to end it and all those things while you're on the shoot. But you've got to be so on the ball with it to get it right. Because um, quite often you can't go back to, you know, fill some gaps that you might have missed. So you've got to be really prepared there. Um, quite often of a night time after a shoot, if you're shooting for multiple days, you'll, you know, write your list down and, and, and start thinking about what the story's doing as you go. So it's like pre-production while you're actually on the production. And then there's like the other end of the spectrum is when you, um, like with a lot of viral content, um, would be more this style where you've got to go in with the storyboard where, um, you'll spitball a couple of ideas amongst the group and with the client um, and, and you'll sort of all end up on, on one particular um, storyline that you want to go with. Um, and then quite often you'll, you know, write out your storyboard, find some images for inspiration of what you might want it to look like. Um, and then quite often we'll go to a sketch artist and actually get the storyboard sketched out. So you, you actually have your, your frames. Um, of what you want it to look like and, and what, what scenes you want. Um, that's the other end of the spectrum. So you can literally just hit, hit the shots that you've already had sketched out. Um, and you always have to remain flexible with those things because quite often you'll be on the shoot and there will just be something incredible that you, you, you know, couldn't have planned ahead for. Um, so you always leave that room for flexibility. Um, and then there's, there's somewhere in between where you'll go in with a good solid idea. You won't, sort of go for your shot list or anything like that, but you'll kind of have, have a checklist of what you've got to hit and what you want to do with it, how much content you need. Um, yeah, so there's sort of like those three different ways to go about it and it varies per, per production. Amazing. So I had no idea you use a real sketch artist to sketch out the scenes for you that you have in your head. Yeah, there's, um, it's really, really helpful, um, especially if you're working with a client that might be um, putting a lot on the line for it. It's really good for, for them to see what you are talking about because it can be quite hard to, um, to describe what a visual scene is going to look like. So it's really helpful to have a sketch. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some really good examples I'll send to you where we've had the sketches done and then when we compare them to the final production in the end, it's just, amazing how close they actually are in real life um, wow. so it's a really helpful tool amazing and I guess for people who um for your clients or people who want to work with you how can people work with you better or work with video teams better how can they you know come to you with their ideas and and the things that you need so that you can do your job really easily The, uh, probably the number one uh, best thing would be like, obviously you'd come, come with, you know, whether you have an idea or, or, or an outcome you want to achieve. Um, the most helpful thing is actually examples, examples of what you might want to, you know, look like or, or what you might want it to feel like or, um, you know, how emotive you want it to be like. It's, it's always examples because there's never... I honestly believe there's never like a completely original idea. It's like you get pieces of inspiration from, from everywhere and make it your own. So it's, it's um, really helpful to do that um, when collaborating with someone creative. Um, that's honestly the most helpful thing of all. And where would you recommend for people who have no idea where to start, where could they go to find bits of inf uh, inspiration to show you as examples? Um, honestly, there's uh, lots of online sources where you can um, where you can find pieces of inspiration. My number one is um, quite often people will go to like a YouTube or something for video content um, to see what's out there. Um, the 
the range of quality on YouTube vary so much. Um, so quite often I go to Vimeo.com um, and it's more of a, um, that's more of a filmmaker's community is probably the best description for it. So you'll have some really, really good creatives producing great work um, on there. And that's always a, um, a great source for some really high quality examples of work. Yeah, I think they have that really great functionality of the Vimeo staff pick. So often I'll just go through and watch those. Yeah, which are really good. Awesome. And I guess. Yeah, um, that's that's the best place to start. Yeah. In terms of creating that highly engaging content and that viral social content that you guys specialize in, what kind of tips can you give to people to create more engaging content, especially when it comes to video? Um, so the, the, the biggest thing would be uh, trying to make the piece emotive. I guess that's the number one thing because there are, I don't know, there just there's so much content out there that is just throwaway content. You wouldn't even, you know, continue to watch for more than 10 or 15 seconds, you know. Like I, I think everyone is just so desensitize the content now like it's just there's so much out there um but it does take a bit to keep people engaged um and the number one thing that's very hard to achieve but will keep people watching or get people sharing is if you can make it emotive um which is a challenging thing to do it's not something you can just sort of describe how to do but it's um yeah it's about making it meaningful um so there's that way of, of getting people engaged and the other thing is just making something completely amazing where it's like um just really visually appealing where people are just you know amazed by what they're seeing or, or they don't know how something was captured you know all, all those things it's like the um Attenborough docos for example the the crews on that just capture stuff that you just can't even comprehend how they did it and that is just so engaging um, across any piece of content if you can achieve something that people can't figure out how it was done. I really think that you guys do that so well um, and it's really hard to describe how to create emotions so I can totally see um, you know why you guys have done so well in your space because you are able to create that emotion and uh, you're right that that emotiveness um, really connects with people and really cuts through all the other noise on social media and all the other content that's out there because there is a lot you're right yeah there's so much noise out there at the moment it's crazy <laughs> and i guess i really wanted to ask you is there a favorite uh video that you've made or scene that you got to shoot because uh, you have done so many amazing things uh, is there one that we should really make sure that we all watch from headstrong films uh, there's probably one of my most proud would be our X Games Real Moto um, piece that we did. Uh, when was that last last year? Yeah, uh, losing track of the years. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a very challenging thing to do. And um, Jackson Strong, who was the the athlete in that video, like while we didn't um, really connect on an emotional level, it was more the the amazing viral stunts is more what we did in that, but it was just such a huge challenge for everybody involved with, you know, with timing, um, timing and the, the danger involved was just out of this world. So it was just an amazing feeling to get that done, everyone safe um, and have an amazing piece of content to, uh, to deliver at the end. That was, that was really amazing. I think uh, Jackson jumps through some explosions and jumps over an aeroplane in that video. So yeah, it was, it is an amazing piece of content for sure. Yeah, it was a, a lot on the line, but um, yeah, we're just yeah, really proud of the end product on that one. In terms of viral content, what's been your best performing piece of content that you've put out there and why do you think it performs so well? Uh, so there's one standout for me was um, a job we did for Monster back in 2019 um, called Monster Mentality. Um, and the approach of that was like a lot of their content and a lot of extreme sports content is just 
just that like it's you know cool tricks or dangerous stunts or things like that but it's very feels very shallow um in terms of like yeah you can watch it and you can appreciate how challenging those things are um but they lack a lot of depth so we went in with the approach on monster mentality to actually like let's tell a cool story and show some emotion in there and actually figure out and talk about what makes these people click um and that ended up being really effective it was um yeah everyone had a really amazing story um and i remember there was uh particularly um with the female skateboarder lizzie amanto um she was just such a cool character to work with and had such a cool story to tell um so I, I sort of see that series um, in particular as one of our most successful. It, it, I think I haven't checked recently, but the, yeah, there's sort of a, each each piece of content there was one to two million views each. Um, so that was a really effective um, series. In the Lizzie Armanto video, and it's phenomenal. And I actually was showing somebody the other day who I met, and their daughter is a big skateboarder. And I'd never heard of Lizzie Armanto and she was saying, yeah, she's one of the best female skateboarders in the world. So, um, yeah, that was pretty cool to see that she is having an effect on someone's daughter and inspiring someone's daughter here in Australia. So, um, yeah, I think the power of your content is uh, is really incredible and uh, no wonder it's had so many views as well. So. So good. Thank you so much, Lockie, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see what Headstrong makes next. No, thanks so much for having me, Alicia. It's um, yeah, a pleasure to chat.